driver for the interval that we, we currently recommend, they found that there was a 10% risk of colorectal cancer at 10 years for people on a two to three year interval, but it was just under half for those people on a short interval at 16 months. So perhaps the area which um, I'm most confident about and which I'm most happy with, because we should see this in our research unit, but FAP and the more recent MUPYH associated polyposis. And I've put them together here, because although they're clearly very different conditions, there's huge phenotypic overlap, and the management of the colon, to my mind, is essentially the same. So FAP, we've already heard from Evelyn, is relatively rare, about 1 in 10,000. MAP, slightly more, uh, more rare, but maybe 1 in 15,000. Importantly, that's an autosomal recessively inherited condition. The background population is probably a heterozygosity of about 1 in 1,000 or 1 to 2 percent of the population. So it's really important, and I'm sure that we're going to see more and more of this in the future. The hallmark of both these conditions is multiple colorectal adenoma, but there is a huge phenotypic variation. So the picture there is what is always put in the textbook as an FAP colon with complete carpeting. We rarely see that endoscopically, or hopefully we should be rarely seeing that endoscopically. There is a rather arbitrary definition of what they call attenuated polyposis being less than 100 polyps. Quite what that means is difficult to discern, and how exactly they get to 100 polyps has been a cut of is very difficult. But you need to be aware of that, because there's certainly people with FAP <coughs> and MAP who might only have 10 polyps. And over a series of various procedures, you'll only see that. Clearly, there are others who have 1,000 polyps at the first time, and their management can be subtly different. But the take-home message generally is that for most of these patients, they need prophylactic agreement surgery. Without this, virtually all FAP patients will get colorectal cancer, about 35 to 40 years of age. For MAP, the date is less clear, but they probably will get cancer, and it's usually 10 to 15 years later. So what's the role of lower GI endoscopy in these syndromes? Well, I think I can break it down into these areas. Diagnosis and assessment operative planning, and also importantly, post-operative surveillance. And I think this is an area that probably traditionally has been done pretty badly, and it's really important um, that these areas are highlighted. So, when do we do it? So for people who have a predictive genetic testing and a positive, the first step is a colonoscopy. And what we want there is to know the number of polyps, the size of the polyps, are there any worrying features? That's what is going to define how we're going to manage them initially, whether they go to surgery or whether we wait a few years and just give an eye on them. Once the diagnosis is confirmed,